There's a quick and dirty approach for measuring calcium hardness, and we do it with a titration method using 0.01 molar EDTA in a burette, dropping it into a 50 milliliter water sample that is basic because of some sodium hydroxide that we've added. And it looks pink at the beginning if there's calcium because of this aerochrome blue-black indicator that we've added. So in this case, we've dropped three milliliters of the EDTA solution into our sample. And we can take that three millimeter, milliliters, multiply it times 20, and we get 60 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Done. That is the quick and dirty approach. Let's look a little further at what's happening, though. EDTA4- and CA2 plus form this complex. Now, before the EDTA is added, the calcium is interacting with the indicator to cause that pink or reddish color. And I'll defer to another YouTube video that describes that over here. Gabriella H. and her colleague, they put together this nice little YouTube video. And so the calcium was interacting with the indicator to, to be pink, but when the EDTA is put in, it binds with the calcium much more strongly than the indicator does and rips that calcium away and forms this nice calcium EDTA complex. And that's the reaction that we've written right here. Now that the calcium is gone from the indicator, the indicator turns a blue, and that was the end point of our titration. So the amount of EDTA that we added to cause this color change ends up being the same amount of calcium that must have been in the sample before we started adding the EDTA. So to do the calculations and get us to the units that we want, we take our three milliliters that was added, multiply times the concentration of EDTA, and then from this reaction, we know that one mole of calcium had to react with the one mole of EDTA, and that's what's right here, and that gives us this 0.03 millimoles of calcium ions. This is the number of millimoles of ions that existed in the solution. When we divide that by the volume, 50 milliliters, and we do a unit conversion again, um, then we can multiply times this one millimole of calcium carbonate per millimole of calcium. This is essentially the definition of these units when we say as calcium carbonate. It's not calcium carbonate necessarily in the solution, but... We, if we have a millimole of calcium, we can say that that is sort of equivalent to a millimole of calcium carbonate. And then we use our 100 milligrams per millimole molecular weight of calcium carbonate to give us our final result of 60 milligrams per liter, which is the same as our quick and dirty method of multiplying times 20. It has to be this setup though, 0.01 uh, molar EDTA, and 50 milliliters of water sample in order to use this multiplier.